All right. It is always a pleasure to have my next guest on the show. One of my favorite people to talk combat sports with. And of course, it is the Menifee maniac himself, Fernando Gonzalez, who will be fighting Sadia Parker next on August the 28th for Northwest Fighting Alliance. Fernando, how are you? I'm good, brother. Yeah, I'm uh, training, getting, uh, we're about, what, five and a half weeks away. So starting to get into the, the hard sparring and, and um, making sure we're ready for uh, Sadia. Yes, sir. Let's talk about that last win over Ty Freeman, round three KO. And it had to feel pretty nice after a year and a half, uh, not fighting, not competing inside of the cage to go in there and get a win, man. How gratifying was that? Uh, It was great, man. Like, you know, we live for fighting. So not being able to get a fight for that long was uh, torturous. (laughs) There's the guys like Sam and and, uh, Dominic Reyes and, couple of the other guys that were in the room you know having fights pretty frequently so uh yeah i was looking to get in there and and get a win and uh it was a great fight i think it was a a good way to test me as well coming back he he had a good game plan of taking me down holding me down and um i was able to kind of work some stuff in the in the in the midst of the fight that you can't really see from bottom that uh allowed me to get that that knock it at the at the end so um, I was happy. I was happy with uh, my performance. What exactly was the stuff that you were doing that was wearing him down? Was it body shots that you were landing pretty cleanly? Uh, yeah, the, the body shots. Um, he kind of had himself a little bit more elevated than I was. So uh, it's kind of like you're Muay Thai clinching him, uh, uh, the position. So you're landing your uppercuts and, and uh, creating damage. But um, it, so it starts to frustrate him and it's more them trying to tee off on you and that gives you space to get up so as i'm doing that obviously they're burning out more trying to hold you down again so that back and forth going up and down the first round he had he was obviously stronger there second round i could feel myself starting to get up a little more Uh, i was able to dig knees to the body uh just kind of like dirty boxing but from bottom it's stuff that you really don't see but it's uh effective because um when you're down there it's very hard to flex your body you're like you can't really flex your muscles if you're holding them down. It leaves parts of those, uh, especially the body, uh, the organs open. So you're landing clean shots to the body and it starts to break them down. So uh, just stuff that I've kind of had to deal with over over time with guys that want to take me down and hold me there. They they actually have to work. If I'm in the position to, to hit them, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit them and I'm going to hurt them. Yeah, and you said that you were down two rounds, nothing going into that third round. Did you yeah. feel a lot of pressure? Like, did you feel like your back was up against the wall? Like, you really needed to go out there and get the win? Or did you feel like maybe you had him tired and hurt where you felt that third round was going to be yours? Um, yeah, no, well, I mean, like, normally, I, I mean, anything can happen in the fight, right? But the, when I'm fighting guys like that, I, I don't really focus too much on points because I'm a bit, I'm always running into guys that are really good wrestlers, you know? especially at the level that I, of guys that I'll be fighting to have some kind of like good wrestling. So I never really focus too much on uh, the points because I know they're obviously scoring. So I focus more on breaking them down and getting myself either back up to my feet where I can knock them out or break them down enough where in the later rounds I could, I could take, uh, take over. But, um, and I think that's kind of better for MMA because for me, as I'm as a mixed martial artist, it's like we work jujitsu, we work all these other things, but if you get taken down, you're automatically losing. So I, for me, that's never been kind of my thing, but I know I still have to kind of play by the rules. So um, fighting under their rules, but still tactically, just trying to wear him out. So even if they're they're in a better position, technically, I'm still outworking them. So like. Uh, Ty Freeman, he had a good position. He was, uh, he had that like the knee ride, and he was high, keeping his hips high on my knee. So if I stand up too fast, drops his hips, blows my knee out, you know things like that. You, you got to be careful with. Uh, so, but he was so far on one side that it allowed uh, the whole right side of his body for me to attack, and um, the knees of the body were working perfect. Uh, I could feel him start to weather in, like in the second. And the third, I knew uh, 
I just needed to put the pressure. <clears throat> I put the pressure on. I was going to finish him. And ultimately, you did get the finish in the third round. For anybody that didn't see it, run us through how you got the finish, how you set it up, and ultimately uh, the aftermath uh, of the win. Yeah, um, like pretty much once I knew his hands were kind of like uh, he was tiring out, uh, he was leaning a little bit to the outside of my of my cross. So I was like, okay, he's leaning. I'm going to follow it up with a kick to the same side. So I went jab. Uh, he leaned away. So then I, I repositioned myself. I went jab cross. And off the cross, I just followed the, the my left cross with a head kick, caught him. And then from there, I just saw, saw him start stumbling forward, caught like a tight clinch uppercut, and then followed it with the knee. Um, I was actually, I thought he was done there because he, he kind of face planted a little bit, but they didn't jump in. So I was like, I better, I better keep hitting him until it's it's over, you know? But um, I, I didn't want to give him a chance. I'm, I fought this other guy um, a long time ago, Joe, Joe Williams, and he freaking took me down from my ankle pick from that position, like, like face down, grabbed my ankle and took me down. So I was like, I don't want that shit to happen again. So I was just swinging after that. Well, congrats on the win, bro. Very happy to see you get back in the win column. What was it like fighting in Arkansas? What was the crowd like and, and all of that? Tell me what that experience was like. Uh, it was it was fun, man. Uh, to be honest, I like the area. Um, I, we fought in Oklahoma, and Oklahoma's actually pretty close to there, too. Um so yeah, uh, I don't know. It's just it's weird. Like for me, I like more the country area. So it's like I can go outside and I can be at peace. It's calm. Um, I like that that environment more for for myself. Uh, more like getting into nature. <laughs> so it's like I like being able to be able to calm myself down before a fight and just kind of be on my own uh, with my own thoughts. You know what I mean? Like what I think I I need to do in the fight and. Uh, so for me, that kind of environment is is better. So when I was out there, I was uh, it was you know like it had just rained, but it wasn't raining when we were there. So it was just like really mellow and really chill. The the people were cool and and obviously fight fans. They were just like into uh, as soon as they knew we were fighting, they just kind of want to know where it was and and I don't know. It was just it was it was a good experience. So. For me to come back after pretty much two years, it was like a real like Zen uh, type of feeling, you know. So um, I think it'll be the same with this one. Um, Zadaya, I think it's just going to uh, probably uh, pull a little bit more of a fighter out of me. He's more of a striker. So um, I think it's just going to it's going to be more of a, of a stand up battle. Uh, I've seen some of his fights already, so. Uh, he definitely has he has some skill level that that's going to be uh, like a tough puzzle, you know, a fun puzzle. So uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm excited to to dive into that here shortly and talk about that specific matchup um, with Sadia. But first, I wanted to ask you too, man. Uh, this last fight with Ty, I did an interview with you, but it was earlier on in camp. So just tell me what was the the weight cut like for you to get down to 185? Is it pretty seamless? Because I know you were a little bit heavier when I talked to you last. Uh, yeah, no, it was, it was like, my weight's weird. Uh, as soon as I get to a, it's almost like a plateau. <laughs> and then after that, it just starts falling off of me. But, uh, no, it was, um, it was pretty easy. We, I got there, I think on Thursday. So I didn't even have like really a whole day or anything to hang out or anything. I just got there, started cutting right away. And then we weighed in. So it was, it was, uh, it was a real easy cut. Uh, normally you give yourself another day or two to to like get there early, start cutting, but my weight was on pretty close, so I was like, and it was cheaper for the flight, <laughs> so I was like, I'm gonna save some money. Uh, but no, I was we got there and just started cutting the weight, and um, had, uh, uh, J Street had pretty much everything that we needed there, so like I was able to do treadmills, jumped in the sauna. I think I only did like maybe two times or three times and I was on. So it was pretty good. And we're about five weeks out from this next fight with Sadaya. It's at middleweight as well. What's your weight at today? Shit. Right now I'm like uh, 205. <laughs> now I'm still pretty heavy right now. So 
No, nah, once I get down to uh, uh, pretty much once I'm like hitting the 90s, 95, then it's the weight cut's easy. Anything that's under 10 pounds or in the 10 pound range, it's going to be an easy cut. But uh, and then it's just more like timing the like when I start cutting out my food. And but right now, I mean, right now it'd still be kind of shitty, but I could make the weight now if I wanted to it'd just be. It'd be a shitty weight cut, but we're still a ways out. But who are the guys that you're really fine tuning your skill set with leading up to this fight with Sadia? Um, you know, it's kind of weird. Like I, I just pick guys that are similar build uh, to Sadia. Um, and then I just kind of ask him like the, you know, he likes he likes working uh, certain techniques um, or his movements a certain way. And I and I try to I get guys that mimic that same same kind of movement, but um, nothing too too drastic because uh, you never know. You know what I mean? It, it, uh, you might be training something completely different. So I don't really go too much on on on. It's more the build, like whatever his frame is, his reach. You know, then I have the right reads on what he might throw and how I could slip it. You know. But um, other than that, um, pretty much everybody in the room, um, if they're not trying to kill me, <laughs> then we can work, you know. How often is uh, is Hendo around these days? Uh, he's always in there, yeah. He's always in there training. Uh, Sam's getting ready for his fight right now. Uh, so we're always, you know, in and out, helping those guys out. But um, So, yeah, I mean, pretty much anybody that's in the room is – we all work with each other, so from the littlest guy to the biggest guy. So uh, right now, Jared hasn't been in, but uh, so that's another guy that we normally work with. So it, it really don't matter. It's just we all from top top to bottom, we're, we're all getting work with each other. You mentioned Jared. Obviously, you're talking about Vandera. Did you yeah. get a chance to talk to him after that fight? Because what a, what a win over a tough opponent, his first official win inside of the octagon. I'm sure he's feeling pretty good. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, he looked good, man. He was. He, he, they were telling him to wrestle a little bit, you know. But you can tell he was. He was on, you know. Like once he was landing, he, uh, he knew it too. He felt it, and that's why he kept it going. Uh, he looked. He looked good, man. Um, uh, but you know, he's been chilling right now. He's been uh, kind of relaxing and getting everything in in order with his gym, and and uh, he's taking like a bunch of selfies with his daughter, so. I'm sure he's enjoying life right now, so I'm happy for him. And uh, he's been in. I'm lying. He's been in the gym, but he's not not like when you're getting ready for a fight, you know. What else have you been doing outside of fighting? Because you got to do something to to kind of take your mind off of the daily grind that you you have inside of the gym. Uh, you know, I don't know. Like to be honest, it's MMA for me. Like fighting, martial arts is, is what I love doing. So if it's uh, well, now it's more teaching my son because he's been going in the gym with me now uh, pretty frequently. So training him and getting him ready. Um, we got more like young guys coming in the gym who uh, kind of just hit me up and uh, want to start learning like, you know, the stuff that I'm doing. So uh, I've been working with, with uh, more more guys in the gym now. So between them and then my uh, training my son, that's kind of all I've been uh, – adding to my plate, but it's a lot. Uh, it's a lot because uh, I, I want to see them grow too, you know what I mean? So I'm trying to shorten up the like the gaps where I think that they can get better at quicker. So all that shit makes me makes my mind work a little more. <laughs> Does your son want to grow up and do this full time? Is that his goal right now? No, I think he just wants to learn and, and defend himself. He's He's 15, so he's at the right age where he he wants to start training, lifting, and and getting in good shape. And um, so for me, it's it's a fun time. He's and he can hit, man. Fuck, he, we're uh, we're we just been hitting mitts for a little while, and then, um, but he's always been off and on since he's a kid. But now more so, like he's getting into the combinations and the setups, and and where he can actually like retain that stuff. Uh, so we're working on strategy, and then. Um, I was like, hey, let's just spar like light volley, you know. So I'm going with them, 
and my style is pressure. So I'm pressuring them, pressuring them. And I could tell, like, you can see that their facial expression changing when, when you're going with somebody, you know, so they're getting ticked off or whatever. And so it's like, his eyebrows just V'd out. Like he's got kind of like ticked off. Like I was pressuring freaking hit me with a hard ass cross. And I was like, Oh shit. It was like right at the, it was perfect. It was like right at the end of the punch. And, uh, yeah, he's got he's got heavy hands, so I was really proud of him. But at the same time, I was like, "Hey, take take it easy." But, uh, yeah, no, it was funny. Very cool, man. That's that's great that he's learning and and doing that at the age he's at now. Who knows what the future holds? Let's talk about this fight, man. Uh, Again, Sadia Parker. He's 18 and eight. This is for Northwest Fighting Alliance, and it's called Retribution. So Bentonville, Arkansas. You'll be heading there for this event. Uh, and your opponent looks l- legit. I mean, he's got a lot of TKO and KO victories. So stylistically, you said that this is going to be a stand-up fight. <laughs> I'm sure it's probably going to steal the uh, the fight of the night there, right? You're gonna, you guys are going to go in there and throw down. Does it get out of the first round, man? Uh, you know what? I I'm tired of making those those kind of predictions. I think he's uh he looks like a durable guy. Uh, I'm definitely training for 15 minutes. Um, and if it goes to 15, it's going to be an exciting fight. Uh, but I, I think uh, the way I'm training, the way I mean, obviously I'm putting on size I, I, to be at 85. I've been lifting, so um, with with the power that I have, the speed that I've been working, um, I see me finishing it. But uh, you know, that's that's always what I hope for. I'm going in there to try to knock him out. So, um, but we'll see how much he can take, and and, um, and uh, either way, the fans are going to win. They're going they're going to have a good show. What is he best at? Like, what what is the one thing that you got to be most cautious about when you're in there with him? He's a good boxer. He has a good, uh, um, he likes to box a lot, but it, it, a lot of it's, um, he rips the body. Um, but he's, he, you know, a lot of, a lot of it's going to be his boxing movement. And then I love to box. So I got to, I just got to, you know, for me, I got to set up my, uh, my footwork to beat his footwork and then land my shots. And, and, uh, in the midst of that, you're going to get a good fight, you know? Obviously, he's gonna work on some some of the things that I I, I my movement or whatever. So it, it it'll be exciting. I think um, anybody that likes to kind of you know stand up, um, yeah, it's gonna be exciting. It'll be fun. I, I, it's still an MMA fight, so anything can happen. If we're in the midst of that and a takedown happens, I love the street fight too. So <laughs> ground and pound, all that shit's exciting to me. So it's not like that's not, uh, you know, that's out of the question. But I think uh, in order for that stuff to happen, we're going to have to meet in the middle, and that'll be more likely a boxing fight, striking fight, and then go from there. Very good, man. Looking forward to this one. For anyone that can't be there in the venue come fight night, can you watch it online? Is there going to be a link people can go to uh, to stream it? Uh, yes. Uh, I, I think they did a pay-per-view on our last show, so they'll have a link for us to have that up again uh, I don't have it yet, but uh, once they once they put it up, I'll, I'll have it up for you guys. Very good, man. If you go in there, you get this win, you make it two in a row, you know, and you're healthy. How active do you want to stay? Do you want to fight again here soon? Like, what, what's your what's your mindset at like as far as that goes? Yeah, I'm I'm trying to fight every three months, every three to four months. So uh, as soon as this fight's done, it, actually from that my last fight to this has been about three to four months. So. Um, that's kind of a, the pace I want to stay on. I think uh, in that way, I'm not really breaking down my body too much. And um, I'm staying seasoned. You know, uh, anything over six months, I think you kind of get those jitters. I mean, some people, I guess they, they, they don't get them. But uh, I know my timing's off anytime I fight with past six months. You know, if I give it too long, you're, you're not going to get the same fighter out of me. And uh at least the first round. <laughs> the first round, you're trying to get that timing back. Second and third, you're going to get a better fight. Uh, but I think uh, the timing with this one, uh, the, the style of fight that I have, it, you know, it's going to be a good, a good fight. Can't wait, man. August the 28th, Fernando Gonzalez, Sadia Parker uh, is going to be a banger. Northwest Fighting Alliance. It's always a pleasure to talk to you, man. You you know that. You're one of my favorite guys to talk to. Uh, before I let you go, I want to give you the floor. Tell people where to follow you on social media. And if you have anybody to thank, the floor is yours. 
Right on, brother. Thank you. Uh, yeah, all the guys at Team Quest, uh, Dan Anderson's Athletic Fitness Center, um, Stevac. You can uh, you can find me at Menifee Maniac on Instagram and um, and Twitter. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, all the guys that are helping me out get ready. Uh, my son obviously is keeping me motivated and <laughs> doing two a days. So, um, yeah, um, I'm just I'm I'm excited to fight, man. So uh, come uh, August 28th, I'll be ready and I'm, I'll be ready to give you guys a good show. So thank you guys that are helping me and sponsoring me to to put on a great show, guys.